What's up, Star Wars friends? My name is Prince, and I'm an urban acolyte. And this is not an episode of Star Wars Chats. As a matter of fact, I'm probably not even going to be talking about Star Wars in this video. But um, it is a Sunday at the time that I'm recording this. It is Easter Sunday, so happy Easter to all of you who observe that holiday. Um, I should probably be somewhere preaching right now, but I'm not. And uh, I have this YouTube channel, so I'm going to come here and preach. And some of you may, well, actually, I'll be honest, uh, I imagine a bunch of people just clicked off the video. Uh, but I think it's funny, like I had a guy uh, during the week that posted a comment and said, well, I love this video. I stopped watching because uh, some of your videos you were coming off as too preachy. And I'm like, dude, do you, do you really even know me? Because this channel started, well, the whole... Star Wars thing started as an accident. Those of you who have been here since day one, uh, actually those of you who've been here since day one when it was Urban Acolyte TV and it wasn't Star Wars videos know that my background is in theology. Um, I was uh, in my second year of studies at Vanderbilt Divinity School uh, working towards becoming um, ordained as a Universalist Unitarian minister. Before then I was at Louisville Seminary where I was becoming ordained or were in the process of becoming ordained as a Presbyterian minister. I grew up Presbyterian um, and uh, no matter how hard I try, some of those Calvinist ideals still come out um, in like my work ethic and the desire to study and, um, and, and really stick to the source material or George Lucas. So it's like I'm like the John Calvin of Star Wars or something. Uh, even though I, I, I try to get away from that Calvin guy. But um, I was thinking this morning about uh, uh, last night I tried to apply for to the uh, YouTube Next Up program. If you don't know, it's like a creator camp. YouTube uh, takes you to one of the creator spaces either in New York or Los Angeles. You go through a week of training with uh, professionals. You get to network with uh, big time YouTubers. So at the New York one, uh, maybe those guys that will be going to the camp in May will get to meet people like Casey Neistat. Right. So it's a great networking opportunity. Great for education and training. And they also give you a voucher to buy new equipment. Um, well, they wouldn't take my application because I waited until the last the very last minute because I was trying to get uh, the three videos that they evaluate out yesterday which is that's a bit of a confession on my part why I've been putting out I put out like six videos in two days or something like that five or six which is a, a lot for me um, but one of the questions on the application uh, was what makes your channel so much different from other channels in your niche and I said well I have this background in theology and I'm a martial artist I was inspired by Star Wars to study world religions, to get into martial arts and meditation. And the real goal for my channel is to use Star Wars as a tool to get people interested in martial arts and meditation. And I have this other series that I do called the Urban Acolyte Training or Real Life Jedi series where I want to show people the things that I do to show, hey, I walk the walk, I talk the talk, and I want to meet people in the in the world who are doing these things and if you know anything about Chris Crudelli and his show that was called Mind Body and Kick-Ass Moves that's really what I envision the Urban Acolyte uh, real life Jedi series I want it to be like a show right I have big ideas for this channel besides me standing in my attic or when I get moved to my other house uh, where I grew up in so um, Ron Spikes is like, it sounds like you're selling a house. Not really. I'm living in a rental house. Well, I own the house, but my family's rental house and I want to move back into my family's house where I grew up because that's home. This is, you know, I feel like I'm in exile right now. Um, and there's, I, I won't get further into my, my personal life, but there's nothing crazy happening. I just want to live in my other house because it's nicer and um, better for the future of, of all the projects that I have going on. It's better that I live in that house uh, than, than this one that, that was built in 1932 and is falling apart. <laughs> but anyway, I thought this morning about 
my entrance, one of my uh, essays on my application to Vanderbilt Divinity School. And I want to share that with all of you. It's like a theological reflection. It was the place where I was in 2014 uh, when I just rebooted Golden Bell Training, my old YouTube channel, to Urban Acolyte TV. Um, and at the time, all this star, like I, I probably had uh, like 50 subscribers on this channel. You know what? I don't really... You know what? I hadn't even rebooted the channel yet. I was still a uh, Golden Bell training. So Urban Acolyte TV hadn't even been born yet. I was just then starting to call people Urban Acolytes on that old channel. So this is this is a look back to where I was mentally and, and physically and spiritually, if you want to go there, um, almost three years ago. Right. Because I wrote this in 2014, in the fall of 2014. So the question that I'm responding to is reflect on a theological book, issue or idea that has recently captivated you, highlighting its connection to your own theological development in relation to religious congregations, the academy and the world. My response goes, I have to confess that I was writing these entrance, entrance essays on a quiet Sunday afternoon on my job at the child abuse hotline. As I began this final essay, I received a call from a Metro Nashville police officer who was requesting immediate assistance from a case manager with the Department of Children's Services. Unfortunately, he was calling to make our department aware that an 11 month old female child suffocated in her sleep while spending the weekend with her grandmother. Life is short. For some people, life is too short. We should cherish every breath we take because we never know when it just might be our last. Although I have presented this very somber situation, I have to make it clear that we should not live our lives fearing the unknown. I am also not advocating that people become overly active thrill seekers because that will lead to an attachment of a different type. Alan Watts in his talk titled The Middle Way touches on the idea that I wish to get across to you, the reader, or the listener in you guys' case. In this talk, Alan Watts takes his audience along for the journey as he traces the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama, Shakyamuni, or the Buddha, to their Hindu roots. The specific part of Watts' talk that I would like to focus my discussion deals with the breath, but I first need to take a step back to establish a foundation. The Buddha's teachings deal primarily with becoming aware of the existence of suffering and how to ultimately end suffering. Dukkha is the word that is translated to mean suffering. The Buddha says that Dukkha is caused by Trishna. These are two of the four noble truths in Buddhism. Now what is interesting is that the word Trishna is very similar to our word thirst. The difference between these two words is that thirst is a normal function. Krishna is a condition for a person who is thirsty, but they attempt to quench their thirst by drinking alcohol. Now, when a person drinks an alcoholic beverage, the body immediately senses that a liquid is entering the body. The problem is that alcohol causes dehydration. This analogy presents a problem where the more one drinks an alcoholic beverage to quench their thirst, the more the body will require fluid to intake as it becomes increasingly more dehydrated. Based on the analogy of Trishna being like trying to quench thirst by drinking alcohol illustrates how Trishna is the cause of dukkha or suffering. Watts describes Trishna as attempting to breathe while one's hand is choking the self at the same time, which brings us back to the breath. According to Watts, the word Nirvana literally means to blow out. He says that near means a negation and Vana deals with breath or breathing. If Trishna deals with holding on to the breath, then Nirvana is the release of breath or an exhalation. It's interesting that a term for exhalation describes the third noble truth, which is the cessation of suffering. It is interesting because exhaling is a natural process. The anatomical structure of the lungs and rib cage have an elastic quality, causing them to contract when they expand. To inhale requires effort, and to hold on to the breath requires an increasing amount of effort. To exhale requires no effort at all because it is the way the lungs and ribcage are designed. 
Is this entire idea of holding on to breath interesting when you consider that holding on to the breath goes against nature? What is even more interesting is the comparison of Nirvana to an exhale. This is interesting because Nirvana sounds like something that requires a great amount of effort. Nirvana is the cessation of suffering, and it is the great achievement of the Enlightenment path. When one realizes Nirvana, they become, in Watt's words, a rather extraordinary person, a Buddha. The point that is difficult to grasp is that the Nirvana state is already present, it's already here. It is up to the seeker to become aware of the Nirvana state. It is like a baby coming out of the womb. The baby requires a slap on the bottom from the doctor to realize that they can breathe completely on their own. Now I realize that the comparison to childbirth is a bit of a traumatic experience, and unfortunately, we're realizing the true nature of things is not always an initially pleasant experience. One example in a different tradition is the crucifixion and eventual resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus experiences a very painful and traumatic death by crucifixion. But what is even more remarkable about this event is that, well, in the Bible narrative, Jesus is said to give up the ghost or to willingly give his breath away. What happens is that Jesus eventually is resurrected. He transcends the constraints of life as we know it to be because for most people, life ends at death. It is important to consider when Jesus said that the person who tries to keep their life will lose it, but the person who loses their life will keep it. Jesus gave up the ghost or the breath. What happens is that he kept his life. It is important to point out that there is a connection between the life and the breath in the Hebrew culture. In the book of Genesis, when God or the Tetragrammaton or Hashem creates the creature from the earth, God breathes into the creature. The creature is filled with the breath of life and becomes a living nefesh. The creature becomes a living being. So far, we have looked into the idea of Nirvana, the death and resurrection of Jesus of Nazareth, and the breathing mechanic in order to point out the connection between life and breathing. It is interesting to see that by following the natural order of things, one becomes more. By letting go of attachments, one realizes that there was actually nothing to fear. We find that the fears we allow to cling to us are not actually real. Jesus gives his life willingly and he becomes the resurrected Christ. The person who ceases to cling to their attachments realizes that the nirvana state is already present and they become enlightened. Now in the beginning of this essay, I mentioned an 11 month old baby girl who tragically passed away much too soon. This child is a reminder of, of our own mortality. She is a reminder to cherish the present moment. She is a reminder that the only thing we really need to do is to continue to breathe and to naturally allow ourselves to become aware of the true nature of being while we are able. So that's where I was and in a way that's the birth of this this thing that I'm trying to do here. And I think it's interesting, it's fascinating actually, that in the teaser for The Last Jedi, what do we hear Luke telling to do? Breathe. Just breathe. And so that's where I'm going to end this. I'm not going to really ask you guys for comments, but, you know, if you want to leave something, if you learn something about me or this channel or where the real mission of this channel, which is to teach you guys to breathe, to be present, focus and neutral, focus on the present moment and, and, and look in Star Wars for lessons that you can apply to your real life, then I've done I, I, you know, I, I've done what I set out to do, but, you know, leave me your feedback below and I'll, I'll check back and see what you guys have to say. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead, click on that subscribe button and take your first steps towards becoming an urban acolyte. Use your love for Star Wars to become a literal force for change in your community by learning to breathe and to teach others to do the same. That's all I got for this video. So thanks for watching. Y'all keep on breathing. For real, keep on breathing and may the force of others be with you, always.